down a little bit further and say, today we're going to talk about the presentation of Cole's rules. You know? So, of course, you don't have to have this much of a centerpiece to present uh, food. But I just wanted to show you guys some basic cuts so that you will see um, how and what I did, especially in casinos and hotels. You know, I love doing uh, apple carvings and stuff, but they're really not practical in the, in the workforce. They turn brown, they last one time. If I had a garment in a team and I cut most of these cuts, at the, I, at the end of their function, I go through with my bucket of water, I drop all these back in the water, I got a fruit tray tomorrow, I put these same garnishes back on there so they're more practical, they're more, more worker friendly than uh, I love to do apple carvings and stuff like that, but they just don't work in the industry. They pretty for cool competition and stuff like that. Okay, so um, basic cuts I did today, I did, I worked with some leeks, I worked with grapefruits, I worked with cantaloupe, I worked with papaya, uh, lemons, limes, oranges, um, and I'm going to talk to you guys while I'm cutting some of these things to show you exactly how to do them, what to do them. And you'll tell a real garbage person, somebody's interested, you, you get them interested, they start doing this right here. You come in next week, they hey, chef, come here, I got something to show you. They done dropped that in some red food color, so now it's red. So now they're creating their own thing. Those are your real Garmin J guys. They they gonna take what you teach them, and they gonna they gonna use it, and then they gonna start using yellow food coloring, and then red food coloring, and so on. And and that's how I learned. My my uh my uh guy who taught me, oh he made me start over so many times. <laughs> he made me say that this ain't elevated enough, and this ain't this, and this ain't this. But the first thing I wanted you guys to notice was, if you take your tray and it's wrapped, when you take your plastic off, if you just elevate the back of your tray a little bit, the presentation automatically changes from a flat thing in the room to something that when you walk in, you can kind of see it. You know, I've all, sometimes I'll have it sitting like this, you know? A lot of times, this right here is sitting on an orange or something, so it's sitting up about this high. You know, but I, I didn't want to set it up too high today. And then I'll show you guys another key element that I do. I cut everything on a slant so that it's facing like this instead of sitting straight up like this. So those are just presentation things that you learn throughout your, your time. So we're going to cut the cantaloupe first. Now, what I usually do when I'm teaching this for a class and everybody got a knife, we'll get a marker and draw it on here first. But I, I'm freehand, so I've, I've been doing it for a while. But I'll get a marker and draw the, the cut on here so you can just follow it just to get you in the groove. But what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and cut it for you guys. And it's three-dimensional, pair of knife, you know, be good right here. Y'all can you want to stand up, you can. We doing something like that. Can you guys see that? Are we gonna get over just far enough that we can make it touch again? You want to try to stay centered. And water is your friend with garnishes. You drop it down in water. You come back. It's all firm again. It's opened up very well for you. You know, and this kind of stuff. You gotta kind of watch so that you can meet back and your last one won't be too big or too small. But you see I got I gotta get two more right there. You can make you can have a set pattern, five flowers, six flowers, whatever you want to do. Take the part. That's the first dimension. Okay, you're gonna cut that same cut coming in right here. All the way around. And like I said, if you got a centerpiece, you can present, you can go in there and dice some fruit right now and just lay it on that tray 
and it'll look great. You can go get mm -hmm. some, uh, I usually put like some napkins or something down. If I'm doing cheese, you can go get some cheese, put napkins under your garnish so it don't get wet. Put cheese around that tray, you can fan it, you can do whatever you want to do. It's going to look great. You can just cube it, it's going to look great. Can you reuse them? Yep, these right here, cold water and ice, use them three times. Okay. Okay, that was, that's the final cut that way. And what you want to do is go right here. It's the third dimension. And this one's not in any book. This is Chef Willie's. <laughs> <laughs> so what you do, Chef, is drop it in cold ice water once you get your cut so it can bloom open? Yes. We well, open it up, too. I had a guy. You guys, most of you guys know David Leather. Leathers? Is the name David Leathers? He does a lot of carvings. He has some of the prettiest work you ever want to see. He could not present it with anything. Now, now we're talking about that cut. So if you break one of your limbs, you would want to put that on the bottom, but I didn't break any. That's that. Right. Yeah, you can drop that right in the water. You can take the seeds out today, tomorrow, whenever. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I ain't got to cut that one. So I've seen so many guys do this zigzag cut to do that. That's so dated to me. <laughs> if it's not twirling or something, it's not really worth, worth doing. So this <laughs> is a very simple cut. You cut lines about three quarters of an inch apart, straight down. So this one is really simple, but it looks nice, especially when you got all your fruit, your lemon, your lime, your orange. You get to a certain point, you go from the top of one to the bottom of the other. It creates the spiral look. So you just go kind of. Mm -hmm. People think this is hard, but it's really not. Got the spiral look. Didn't do nothing special. So straight lines and you cut from, from the top of one to the bottom of the other. Of course, you cut the bottom of the lemon so that it'll sit how you want. Presentation. Okay. So I would probably bone my bit off. If I wanted to sit straight up, if I wanted to sit down. And sometimes I use what I cut off. I take that, put it right there like that. <laughs> yeah. It works. Been doing it a long time. Mm -hmm. I left out. So we did this green, it's a little bigger, and then an orange, a little bigger, and then a grapefruit. You could set one tray, so you're doing Hawaiian or whatever, and then you can just have pineapple cascade. But you could have the same look like big, smaller, small, smaller, with all spiral. And that's all you need on that tray if you want. A lot of people use kale. I'm not big on kale, but I do use some flour and kale sometimes. But if I do, I want to drop it in a little hot water and then cool it out to get the full color. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to cook it, you just want to shh, shh. That color, if you got that purple, it's an intense purple. It won't be cloudy no more. You know what I'm saying? These are just little tricks in garbage. You know? Uh, the leek. Uh, pretty simple. All you want to do. When I first start, the closer you get to the base, the better it'll open. So I try to get about right there, cut down on it. Steve said his doesn't open up like this. But once you get, uh, get to the point where it's kind of small, and you think, I, I kind of pick it up then. I take my knife, just like a pencil if you're drawing. And you want to try to get at least to the middle part so you can get some opening in there because it will still be big in there if you don't.
shake it like this before I put it in the water. Drop it in that water. Probably, if it's iced, mm -hmm. probably 45 minutes later, it'll be twirled like this. If you got time, you do it in the morning and use them in the afternoon, you cool. Okay? I only had two skewers, and I did it right here. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do these. It's really easy. These are pretty cool, too. Yeah. You take a grapefruit. that much and leave it open. You do your orange. Now, I know all you guys working with uh, food ready to eat and you gotta have your gloves on and all of that. That's the right thing. But I tell you, when you warm it in and you need to feel what you're cutting, sometimes you gotta be real careful. do here. I just did a Mexican party last week. You know the little roasted red pepper, or the little red peppers in orange and yellow? I took those, sliced it up, left it together, threw it in some water. Okay? Let me show you what I did with it. Well, so you just take the skewer, go through the middle, come in, then you want to go orange, you want to go through the middle, and you want to turn it the opposite direction. Then you want to get Those your, are really juicy, aren't you? Yeah, man. <laughs> then you want to get your <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. lime so you got some color. Go the other direction. Gonna get your lemon. And I love these. They look really nice. You can do this. So the other day, when my red peppers opened up, I took the red pepper and put it on top because it was a Mexican theme. You know, but you can take your strawberries. That's nice. Mm -hmm. You can take that sometime. I, I mean, I, I do. I, I take it and put it in the middle of that. You know, sometimes you can take it and lay it on the side. Just let it come up. But it's really kind of cool. You know, I, I think that's a great garnish. It easily lasts too. I put it in water. It, it'll come. Now, if you did a tray the night before, this is the question that I always get. If you did do this tray the night before, you can take a wet towel or a wet paper towel, put it over your garnish, and in the morning it'll just be just nice, it'll be opened up and firmer, you know, just like this. So you can put your tray together the night before. You know, in hotels, when you got 15, 20 trays going out, you prep the night before <laughs> or the day before you want to be finished. You don't want to come in and try and put something on it. So is it harder to do like a watermelon because it has a hard rind on it? No, nah, watermelons are nice, and watermelon you can be three dimensional. You can go from green to the white, mm. and then you can go from the white to the red. Mm -hmm. You know. Now the thing with watermelons is you want to oil it when you get your carbons on there. You want to oil it, and then you want to wrap it with plastic, and you want to leave it in the plastic. You know, you just want your plastic really, really tight so you. It's almost sheer, so you can see straight through it okay. to see your garnish. Okay. Now everybody did flowers, tomatoes. So do I need to do it on the go? Mm -hmm. Everybody did. Mm -hmm. When you get that true farmer day guy, when he do his tomato, that that special guy I'm telling you about, he's gonna go get a green pepper and make some thorns. You know, I, I did that was my thing. I said, well, I got everybody doing flowers, so how can I make it different? Mm -hmm. So I started going to get green peppers. And Making me four thorns. I have my thorns behind my tomato. Mm -hmm. It looks great. You know, work, but it's just you take the bottom. Just, just the key to this is letting the knife do all the work. If you try to peel it like you peel an orange, it's not going to work very well for you. The thinner the better, but if you can't break it. So if you ain't got good practice, you might want to get a little thicker in the beginning. And as you get, get better, you can uh, thin it out. So. You know, a lot of companies have gone to fresh garnishes, herbs and stuff. <coughs> uh, my company like a lot of herbs until you're doing caterings. Caterings, then you can kind of play more with garnishes. But if, if it's for the school and what we're doing for the kids, they like the fresh herbs. 
maybe sticking out of a flower or something, but it's really way more about the herbs than it is about the garnishes. You know, get the bottom, just roll it. As long as it's thin, it'll roll, it'll roll it. Unless you got a freezer bracket rolling that like Yeah. <laughs> Flowers everywhere. <laughs> the little green onions, just like the leeks. You can put green onions around that. Sticking, facing you. you got something going on. So, um, fruit garnishes. Once your tray is garnished, I don't think it's one thing you can't put on. You can put desserts. You I've done shrimp cocktail. I've had this whole tray sitting on ice and just fan the shrimp around this. Yeah. It looks great. So, yeah, it is. You know, Absolutely. You don't forget the tillage. Mm. You wear your people season. <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know? and, and a lot of guys have lost the art of setting up a buffet. You, If I was coming to a buffet and I'm coming this way, I wouldn't want that facing that way. But a lot of people kind of, like they have it looking nice, but they got it facing the wrong way. And you dictate which way the buffet go. You put the plates on the end, which way you want them to go from, and you turn your food to, so that they can see it, you know? So all of that is the presentation, okay? Anybody else got any questions for me? No questions. Going once, going twice. Oh, I have a question. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why all the um, watermelon? Um, uh, it, it protects. It preserves it. The outside. Like, yeah, yeah, just outside. Wherever you carve that, mm -hmm. you oil it. It shines. It looks better, and it preserves it. So I was telling you, like when you make a garnish, you want something you can reuse at least a couple of times. You know, if you cut those apples and stuff, they turn brown. Pineapple birds and stuff. They're cool. I like them. But they're not practical in, in business. Yeah, the watermelon, it, you can use about three times. You cut the bottom off flat so it'll just sit down. You know? Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Good job, Chef. Good job. I put these in this bucket right here, and whoever wants them, you go 